My name is Alice Jambi, aka the Conscious Life Coach, and I help people improve their personal and professional lives. I'm a certified life coach, and when I was going through my life coaching training, I found out that most of the challenges that we have, either in our personal relationships or in our professional lives, is very closely related to emotions and how we handle those emotions. So I went ahead and did some training in uh, emotional intelligence. So I also double as an emotional intelligence coach, which I do as um, a corporate trainer. So I'm a life coach, a corporate trainer, and I'm also an author of um, a self-awareness workbook. I grew up, I was born and bred in Nairobi. We are uh, five of us. I'm the third born in a family of five. I have a big brother, a big sister, then I'm the third born, then I have two twin brothers. We grew up in a satellite in Nairobi, in Dagureti constituency. And uh, I remember going to school. The school is called Riruta HGM Primary School. It's uh, very close to Precious Blood. And I remember when um, I was passing Precious Blood back then, my hope, my dreams were, because Precious Blood was doing so, so very well. Precious Blood Riruta. It was doing so well at that time. So I'll always pass there and go like, one day I'll go to that school. One day I'll go to that school. So when I did my KCPE, unfortunately, I just missed the points by three points. And I remember, my God, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed and um, I was called to Pangani. Little did I know that is exactly where I was supposed to be you know we get we get disappointed because we want things to go away not knowing that you know where we are being led is exactly where we are supposed to be heading so i remember you know as guys being i remember getting so excited buying school uniform and we had been asked to go with a sports um one thing to, to play with and i wanted to do tennis the reason i wanted to do it is because to play tennis it's because i thought it's it's so classy but um, coming from my background, we were not rich, we were not poor, we were just there. And my parents didn't have, that time I think a tennis racket was three times the cost of a hockey stick. So of course my parents were like, unachukua hii because it's the cheapest, it's, you know, it's the cheapest item on the list. And I remember I was not excited about that at all. Lo and behold, I went, I joined the hockey team and I happened to love it and was very, I was very good at hockey. In fact, uh, when I look back, sports has been very, a very big part of my life. Another thing I remember about high school is I used to be given a hundred bob for pocket money. And that a hundred bob was supposed to sustain me until midterm, and that included my bus fare. So what would happen was, of course, I wanted to also, you know, enjoy the mandazis and the bajias but I didn't have money. I had been given little money. So, I mean, I had to think out of the box. So I remember what I did is um, back to sports and athletics. So what I would do is people, my classmates would uh, pay me to go to the tax shop for them. Why? Because they were sure that at least in the canteen, lazima atarudina is of vitu. So what happened is it became my business. And um, that's how I can say that was my, actually it was my second business. My first business was in primary when I was selling um, wrestling pictures to my classmates. Now this was the second time I was uh, trying my hand in business. Of course I didn't know at that point. All I knew is I don't have money, but I have the ability to push and shove in the canteen. So how can I make it work for me? So what would happen, I would go to the canteen and then I'd get paid for it. Now, this was first time, first form. I ended up going home and my parents, my siblings were shocked. Because I just, you know, just a balloon that had been inflamed with uh, so much air. And I was because of eating. Because what would happen is if someone sent me for two sausages and they'd have to buy me two sausages, I'd end up eating two sausages. So if 20 people sent me, 
that meant that I'd end up eating 20 sausages. <laughs> you can imagine doing that every day for a whole term. I went home and my folks, my siblings couldn't recognize me. I didn't know that Then I remember sitting and thinking, wait a minute, they're giving me money. So I really don't have to eat 20 sausages, 20 mandazis, 20 bajias in one day. I can save that money. So that is when I went back now the next time and now the whole, um, the whole four years. They would send me, then I would actually end up saving money. I got to a point where I even uh, stopped asking for pocket money from home because I was making enough money. Another thing that I remember in high school was okay, I was a noise makeup. <laughs> Let's just say I could um, project my voice. So if someone has lost something and it's in the hall, people would pay me in terms of either sugar or biscuits and tell me, by then, please announce. So I think when I look back, it's just, um, it was just looking at, so what do I have now that can help me um, get what I want? So that is, um, that was Pangani. Then from Pangani, I went to University of Nairobi and I kind of like had the same, um, the same idea because I went there and then I discovered or I noticed that my friends kept on asking me, so mm, jeans you have a nice uh, blouse and it hit me Allah, this is another way of making money. So what I do is uh, like twice a week, I'm going to home on Fridays, I'd go to, I'd usually go to Kawangware market, and I don't know, get um, different different blouses, different jeans. I remember I used to get uh, blouses for 20 bob. I go sell them for 100 bob. I get jeans for 70 bob. I sell them for 300. You know, there's nothing I have done. iron. I just went, picked from the market and just connected the, I had connected the, the product to the person who wants. So what happened is I have, um, I have, I still have, this amazing group of friends that uh, we were in campus with. And we were, so, we were so motivated. We kept on thinking we want to look for jobs, we want to look for jobs. So what would happen is before we even finished campus, we'd walk around with uh, full scaps, envelopes, uh, and um, what is it called, staplers. So we'd pass by a building. If you see a company, you sit, you take your paper and pen, you write your application, and then you you hand it there. So, so you don't know anyone, but in our heads, as guys, we, are, we knew we were job hunting. So one of these days, I am um, I'm in the hall. Then a colleague comes in and I tell her, okay, by the way, I'm going to um, this place that I saw, there was a position in the paper. So we are going to head there to place our, our resumes. And she was like, by the way, it sounds like a nice idea, but Sina seen a paper i haven't done i was like don't worry i have um like we used to work with that i have this i have this i'll give you you write then we'll go together then i remember she told me she told me at that point okay even for me i was actually going to standard group to give this um there's this thing that they have asked this job they have uh, they've um put out there and i was going to apply so even you, si ukona mapepa na nini? Eh, ukona full scap, ukona what? Yes, even you apply. I'm like, what position is this? Then they tell me, I've never even heard of such a position. But she encouraged me. She's like, ah, where apply? To set a mini may apply. Eh, to apply to, then we can go and uh, post in both places. So that's what we did. Then I remember that time we hadn't graduated yet. That was around, um, I think, October. We were graduating in December. So... About two weeks later, I get a call and uh, I never actually got a call from where I was going, but I got a call from where this lady was now taking the, her papers to. This is standard. This is a position that I have no clue at a nini wa because I was not, um, I was not aware. So I'm called and I'm thinking, okay, I need to find out what uh, position this is, what they, um, they require, the qualifications and all that. What happens is I'm called, I looked, I, I, I happened to look at the qualifications and they had asked for someone with three years experience. And of course, I mean, at experience here, one day, Sina. So for me, I was like, okay, clearly I'm not going to get this job. So 
there's no need to panic there's no need to let me just prepare myself and walk in like as if i'm going for uh how do i put it I'm, it's an exercise for future interviews no nikito in future you know nita kwa experience so i remember walking in seeing a group of um, seven people and i didn't panic at all why because i knew i apa <laughs> you know this is just practice apa kuna kitu so i didn't panic at all there was no fear and i just answered the questions the way they i was very honest they asked me so have you done this before and i was like no and um we had a very easy conversation then and i think what they picked out from uh, that conversation is because i was doing so much then i was in school i was um I, at Strathmore doing my accounts i was part of some organization for student volunteers and i was also the captain for our handball uh, our handball team in the university so i think for them they saw this person might not be having the experience but if they can be able to do all this then they are probably teachable so that's how i got my first job and uh from there i stayed uh for about six months and then i moved to citizen that was uh this is 2005 i moved to citizen in 2006 then i stayed there until 2015 where i felt um the desire to start to get into business and i remember getting so scared you know it's one thing when you're in this company where it's well known you know everything is going well and it's another thing to move into an unknown territory. And I remember the first time I shared with my parents about wanting to resign and get into business. They're so shocked. They're like, as in who leaves a stable company to go try out things? And I remember telling them, you know what? I feel my intuition tells me this is the right way. I've gotten to a point in this particular company that I've reached the ceiling. I don't feel like there is space for growth and i can tell for me this is where my growth will come from so the year is 2017 and for me it was such an impactful year why because um that's when i started my self-awareness journey and uh, quite unfortunate, it did not start out of a good thing, but it actually started from the result of my marriage ending because uh, things were really bad at home. It had to get to a point where for his own sake and for my own sake and for the children's sake as well, we had to separate. So I remember that point, I was so bitter. I was so angry. I was angry at God. I was angry at myself. I was angry at Jesus. I was angry at the government, I was angry at, I don't know, the world economy, I was angry at everything. And I remember one day sitting and asking myself, okay, fine, you're angry at him, you're angry at God, you're angry at everyone, but how is this really helping? You know, like, how about nijirudiemi mwenyewe, nijulize, you know what, um, clearly this person was not in this relationship by themselves. So how did you show up? You know what role did you play in it through either thinking or not thinking doing or not doing what actions or you know lack of actions and for me that is where my self-awareness journey started and to even think okay fine this is where i am i'm not happy with where i am but where do i want to be how does that look like and what does it require of me and it hit me right there and then I had to look, you know, I had to do a lot of self-reflection and just go deep and ask myself, you know, those kind of questions that we normally run from. And this happened and I started sharing with my friends. Then um, come 2020, another very uh, formative year for me, this is the year that I actually switched careers, but I didn't know. Between 2017 and 2020, I was just feeling like I need to, when I was doing this process for myself, I just knew uh, running this marketing business is not, it's not giving me satisfaction. Yes, it's helping me to pay the bills, but seeing a passion, I'm not excited about it. I'm just here because 
yeah, I need to pay the bills. But I didn't know where to go, what to do. I wanted to connect with my purpose, but I didn't know what my purpose was. So come 2020 and COVID happens. Then um, I keep on saying COVID was my a curse and a blessing for me at the same time. A curse because COVID was the point that broke me down. And how it did this is um, we had a whole line of clients for the marketing company. Then when COVID comes in, the last thing that clients want to invest in is advertising. You know, it's marketing. Everyone just uh, had to hold on to their budgets because people didn't know what would happen. This is a strange phenomenon never heard of before. So the last thing you want to do is spend extra money. So just all the clients pulled out. All the clients pulled out and it was, a, at, it was at a point where we had no money. So for that, um, all the clients pull out, I have absolutely nothing, zero, zero, zero. As in, you, you can imagine there's so much money on a project coming in. Then you move from here to there's nothing. You have no money. No one owes you any money. There's no money coming in. Moving from Alice, you're the type of a person who people are coming to you for assistance, asking for money. And now you can't even feed yourself. You can't even... Um, feed your family you can't it was for me it was my lowest point my lowest point in terms of brokenness in terms of because um, i was still uh, reeling from and learning from my divorce so there's that brokenness bit and then <laughs> being broke believe you me being broke and brokenness is not a good combination to have at the same time and then uh, for me it was such um, a good place to be at where there's nothing I'm, i literally have nothing so i'm building from from scratch so i can decide to build this that i'm passionate about that i'm finding joy sharing my experiences or i can go back to marketing we don't have any clients start from scratch i chose this because i was passionate about it the only thing is i didn't know how to start i didn't know where to go and so what i did i found some amazing friends online amazing how god just aligns you with the right people and they were also in a position where they were transitioning in their lives so we went and formed a whatsapp group and they really 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 helped me just you know formulate my ideas where, where i want to head what i want to do because i remember they're the ones who shared if you want to do this then do you really want to do this as a career like yes i want to do i want to make a switch so if you want to make a switch and you want to do coaching and training then you had better uh, have the right training for it. And I was like, okay, training, what on Afanya Gawapi? And they shared, this is where you can do, this is where. And for me, that is how I switched careers. You know, sometimes I look back and I say, God is so amazing that I was able to switch careers in the middle of a pandemic and right at middle age. Because most of the time we usually think, hey, but I'm past this age, you know, but I don't know anything about, no, I want to be a great cook, but I don't know much. Or Nimezeka, or I'm past, or I don't have the skills, I don't have, it's just amazing when you're divinely guided and you believe in yourself and you know that this is the right idea, you know, this is the right direction to head. It's amazing, I keep on saying, if you know where, if you know what you want and you believe in yourself, the universe will conspire to just bring the right people and make everything happen for you. Success for me means liking what you do and doing what you like. So if I can wake up every morning and be excited, you know, be excited about my day, be excited about what I am doing. I am very passionate about coaching. I'm very passionate about the mental health space because from my own personal experiences, I've come to realize that, you know, how we think how we feel affects the choices that we make and the decisions that we take. And here's the thing, most of us are not aware. We are very unconscious. We live our lives on autopilot. You know, we are not aware of how, who is it, you know, how am I showing up in my relationships? How am I showing up at work? How is it affecting my performance at work? How is my showing up affecting my relationships? Most of the time we usually say, I, but this in there change. I see what total change. I see more more change. We never ask ourselves, how do I change? You know, and uh, that is the space where I'm at. And in fact, most of my coaching 
and uh, my clients can share we never talk about the other person we never talk about the boss we never talk about the partner we never talk about the children because it's very hard to change other people but you can change yourself so how do you adapt how do you change your thinking how do you manage your emotions to be in this situation where you're creating more peace for yourself where you're creating more success where you're creating more happiness for yourself so this is a space where how do I put this? My passion. It's, it's my passion to inspire people, to live consciously, to be more intentional about the lives that, you know, that they want to live, to be more intentional about the impact. I love saying this. Every time you meet someone, either online or uh, physically, you have the power. You have the power to either influence or be influenced, to help or be helped, you know, to impact or be impacted. So question is, are you intentional? Most of the time, we usually get to a point where we are saying, eh, kulienda jejana. Mbona, mbona nime, you know, mbona things are like this, mbona things are like this. Why? Because we never took time to reflect and ask, what can I do? You know, what role am I playing? And that is, if there's one thing I can do until, my goodness, I'm six feet under, is to just spread this gospel of conscious living. Let's just make intentional choices. Let's understand how our choices are impacting, you know, our future decisions. So the choice I'm making now, how will it impact me? Five years from now, two years from now, will it be important? If it will be important, then I need to consider it. If it's not important, then do I really need to say this thing? Do I really need to do this thing? How will it impact my choices and my decisions and my life? So it's all about conscious living. One thing I can add, it's very important to have mentors and coaches around you. I have uh, people who, you know, have helped me and uh, helped me shape my ideas, you know, given me very, oh my goodness, very precious advice that has shaped who I am. I also have uh, virtual, virtual mentors. I just went online and looked who are the life coaches, who are, you know, the guys who are doing so well in this field. And I just followed them. And the thing is, I am learning from them, even if they do not know that I exist. They're guys who I have learned from. And uh, let me also uh, mention the importance of a coach. I have a coach as well. And we sit with my coach and we work on, um, on a monthly basis. What is it that you want uh, to build in your business? What about in your relationships? I don't know, what is it that you're probably having a challenge with right now? What are the obstacles you're facing? So what, um, what suggestions or what strategies can you come up with? Not the coach, but myself. And then what my coach does is she holds me accountable and uh, works, uh, works with me in this journey. My advice, you know, to all the ladies watching this and wondering, Naeza, you know, I'd say believe in yourself. Most of the time, you're the one with the vision and other people will not understand you in fact people think you're crazy when you tell them this is the idea i have but that is the time that you really need to believe in yourself then i believe in the power of prayer as well just spiritual nourishment is so important when you believe in yourself and you ask for divine help and then be consistent show up every day sometimes we show up and you know you open a shop and no one comes so utafunga duka, no, you will pray and ask God, you know what, give me the right clients, you know, bless the people who are going to come in. And then even without um, knowing that whether they'll come in or not, have faith, fungua your duka, kesho fungua, kesho fungua, you know, tell people about it. So what am I saying? Consistency, 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 show up every day and things will work out for you. You can find me on, uh, I'm very active on social media and I go by the... Um, what are my names? Alice, the Conscious Life Coach. Then uh, you can also reach, uh, reach me on ConsciousLifeToday.com and uh, the WhatsApp line 0757-688832. I'm always happy to connect with people.